you know my guest from so many things. My favorites include Napoleon Dynamite and Waterworld, but she's in Corinna Corinna. You might know her from Andre. You might know her from Big Love, Grey's Anatomy, Legends. She's got, I think, 2,000 credits on IMDb. <laughs> Please welcome my best friend, not a joke, Tina Majorino. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And I just want to comment on what you're wearing. Yes. You are wearing the Ari Stidham uniform. Yes, I am. I wore it in your honor. You look great. Thank you. So do you. We met on Scorpion. Yes, we did. We met, we met on set uh, in 2017, 2018, or like sort of around there, right? Yeah. Yeah, been a minute. Yeah. And when, when we met, we became fast friends, but that show m moved a mile a minute. I mean, the first, I feel like our first real bonding moment when we really clicked in that we had the same sense of humor was when we were doing Instagram stories and you did an unauthorized Zoom on my face. <laughs> we just immediately started joke fighting. And that sort of set the precedent for our relationship, especially our relationship online, because we go live all the time and just forget that we're not FaceTiming. We, there was an episode where there was a bunch of water work and you are an old pro when it comes yeah. to water work, right? Yes. Um, there were actually people on our crew that worked with you on Waterworld, right? That's, that's true, yeah. What did you witness on that set that were like incredible feats of cinema? And at the time, did you know? Looking back on it now, like no one would ever make that movie because all of it was real. We were really in the middle of the ocean. Those sets were real. The atoll was the size of a football field and it was floating on the ocean. I mean, it was... It was a huge, huge undertaking. And we had some of the best cinematographers and set designers. And I mean, it was just an incredible experience, but we, you know, filming a movie like that, bad shit happened all the time. <laughs> People got hurt all the time. People got really significantly hurt, I hear, right? Yes, I okay. got burnt by, um, What's the flammable liquid? It's not, I don't mean like gasoline, but the jelly. I got burnt by that. I got stung by jellyfish five different times on that yeah. set. Yeah. To the point where like Kevin Costner's nickname for me was Jellyfish Candy, JC. <laughs> and um, Gene Triplehorn and I, before production started, like four days before we started, uh, the trimaran, we were out doing a test run and the bow of the trimaran broke and we both went overboard and it was horrific like probably the worst day of my mother's life <laughs> <laughs> so wait but, a second <laughs> you know so no, no, I no, mean, no, no, no no can you can you describe that set piece the kevin costner's character's boat is a trimaran which is the ship with three holes and then it has netting in between those you know each each section and the original build of the boat had a bow on it that didn't it wasn't supported it was just sticking out like normal like a like a diving board at the front and obviously we were doing training on the boat because we're supposed to have never been on land before so we have to be comfortable on the boat and so Jean and I were out on the bow and I had a life vest on that was way too big for me but I had one on and she was standing behind me, holding the railings behind me. And we were hauling ass. We were going like, I don't know, 20, 30 miles an hour. And the, the waves were huge. And we were like, this is so fun. This is beautiful. And all of a sudden, the thing just snapped. And the stunt guy saw it happen and ran up and put his arm up my life vest and threw me overboard so I didn't get caught. But Gene got caught in the as the bow went down and so you know she went overboard I went overboard about 12 stuntmen went overboard and they got us and like originally the company the studio that was making Waterworld was like no we're not going to get the set blessed by the big kahuna and as soon as that happened like 
I think it was a day later, we had the big kahuna come and bless the set because they were like, this is not how we want to start production. Wow. Yeah, so they had to rebuild the front of the boat, obviously, and that's why in the film, there is a bar that goes underneath the bow. But the big kahuna, can you explain to, to the viewers who that is? It's, it's Hawaii's <laughs> spiritual uh, leader. He is the most respected person in Hawaii. It's like um, a bad, it's a bad analogy, but it's it's similar to the papacy. It's similar to a pope. You know, that's like a once in a lifetime thing. When am I ever gonna see the big Kahuna ever again? Hello. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Like I, I mean, one time I was in the same restaurant as David Caruso, and I was like, this must be <laughs> sort of like meeting the big Kahuna. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it, it wasn't. He got tomato slices and, uh, okay. and you know, he was taking care of himself. Was trying yeah. To, trying to stay trim. I do have to ask you a question about Napoleon Dynamite. Okay. I'm a, I'm a huge Napoleon Dynamite fan. It was, it's something that, you know, is sort of awkward because we're so close. I don't feel like I can talk to you about it all the time. I don't <laughs> want to, you, know, you played the character Deb in Napoleon Dynamite. Yes. One of the most iconic parts of that character was her hairstyles. Where did they come from? Okay, so I have to tell you a little bit of a backstory. Jerusha, who is Jared Hess's wife and co-writer of Napoleon, she was sort of in charge of designing all the characters' looks, and she was like the costume designer and everything. And when I first signed on to do the movie, she had this like knockoff uh, Nancy Drew sort of like novel that the cover of the novel was this girl with like what is now considered like a pretty chic haircut for whatever reason but uh at the time it was just sort of like an off kilter sort of you know I I don't know I don't want to throw any shade but like it was purposely not in style purposely not cute I take that So I was signed on to do something else right after. So I couldn't cut my hair. And if I'm honest, I also like didn't want Deb to look like that either. So it sort of worked out because it was like, well, I can't cut my hair. uh, And I also don't want to. So when we were discussing hairstyles, my mom was there with me because I, my mom came with me to set until I was like 19. So my mom was there and she was sort of like, well, why don't you do the, like the hairstyles that we did on you when, when you were little? Cause we were trying to think of like what Deb's vibe would be that it would be, you know, from, from the thrift store and like hand-me-downs, whatever, that maybe she was stuck in a different decade. So we legitimately used photos from my childhood of hairstyles that my mom did to me so real stuff you rock you would like yeah wow legitimately a side ponytail especially the fountain the fountain was something i did the crimped hair was something that my mom did all the time to me so my mom and the hairstylist like sort of worked on that which i thought it's just so funny like my mom is a part of a couple of different movies that like no one knows that she was a part of it's so iconic the side pony the all of it is so iconic, um, especially to me, uh, not just being your friend, but because that, that movie was so important to me and in just like my comedy and, and absurdism. And I, I so appreciate you taking us back to Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, thanks so much for coming on again, Tina. And if there's anything you want to plug, I know No Pressure has been out for a while now. Oh yeah. So I have a podcast with my brother now. It's called No Pressure. And you can find that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else that you listen to podcasts. I did that podcast, and it was quite fun. You were our very first guest. (laughs) I love you, Tina. Thanks so much for coming on. I love you, too. Everybody, there's Tina Majorino.